Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Still doing my pandemic projects. These are the things that have kind of found their way into my to-do buckets that just haven't got to done. And uh, this one is one that came to me from uh, one of my flea market finds. It's, uh, it's had its life. It's missing a bump cap here. Uh, and it's uh, got an annoying stick right here. So as it comes to the bottom of the stroke, just there it catches and uh, that usually means that something is either wrong in the alignment of an oscillating gear or more frequently that the axle shaft is bent. Uh, I got a replacement ax axle shaft that's been sitting on my desk for a while and uh, what usually happens is the part that goes through the pinion gear right here if you get a bow this is probably a bad way to show it but yeah, it'll work. If you get a bow, if you got a bend in it, it doesn't clear the axle shaft and gets hung up on that section. So I think that's what's happening with this one. It's been sitting on the side. I probably should have ordered the uh, replacement bump cap. I didn't, but I wanted to make sure that I could uh, make this thing work rather than have it be a parts wheel before I got too crazy with this. My thinking is that it's bumped because this bale is terribly bent. And I'm thinking that something happened in this with a slam or something like that that caused the axle shaft to bend. Uh, so let's take it apart and let's see. We'll, we'll come back and we'll fix the bail later. But uh, for now I wanted to show you how to take apart, service a uh, Pen Battle 4000. This is one of the original series. And uh, replace an axle shaft if that happens to be the issue with this reel. If it's not, if it's something else, we'll, uh, we'll get involved in that as well. So I've been doing reel repair now for over 20 years, probably more like 30 years. I probably just don't feel like counting them all. Um, but uh, I've seen a lot of things, and I'm trying to share my experiences with you uh, as I go about working in my shop on a regular basis. The, um, the things that I, I've come to learn, things like taking off uh, pieces and parts in a particular order, keeping track of them, like taking a picture uh, of the, uh, the disassembly process so that you know where the pieces and parts belong during reassembly. Uh, take that on a, a digital camera, take it like I'm doing here on a movie if you like. Uh, take it from uh, uh, a phone, doesn't matter. But if you take pictures along the way, you'll know where the uh, parts belong if you get stuck. Uh, giving you advice on things like going to find schematics for the reels or, or where to purchase the parts. I do that on a regular basis on these things. So if you like that kind of a thing, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I may not be doing your particular reel here, but I do all kinds of reels. And I have a good library of over 200 videos now. So you may find that particular service video in, your, uh, in the library as well. So um, if you like that kind of stuff, please subscribe. And... Uh, Stay tuned as I post frequently. So I've just taken out the side plate screws. I noted that the bump cap is no longer there. We'll go get one of those at some point. Probably get a replacement bail because that one's can be rebent, but uh, we'll see see how that goes over time. All right, I've removed those things. I want to pull out the side plate then. And this reel looks like it has the original factory grease. <coughs> it's a uh, blue grease. Um, but again, there's something that's obviously sticking here. I'm just checking here on the stroke just to make sure that uh, we're okay. And when, on, when we're on the upside of the stroke, we're fine. And here's where we're hanging as we get to the lower part of the stroke. So we're not bumping any of the case here. It's not a matter of interference below. So uh, we're going to think that it's the axle shaft. So let's, uh, let's take that axle shaft out. We're going to do that by removing the screw and the cross block. And we'll do a complete disassembly and service on this one. So if you just happen to have the reel and you're trying to figure out how to tune it up, uh, the Battle, the Battle 2, the Fierce, Fierce 2, the Pursuit, Pursuit 2, they're all basically the same structure as this reel. The case is different, the ball bearings uh, differ, some of those other things. Uh, oh, I probably should have brought that all the way up because I can't even pull it out of there. So that to me says it's axle shape. 
It is axle shaft. Uh, it's hard. It may be hard for you to see, but this is bent. And uh, let's see if we can put it across here. I don't know if that's going to show any better here. It's definitely bent, and that's definitely causing the problem. So the next thing, I just want to make sure that I have the right replacement shaft. Kind of looks like I do. We'll find out. This may have been from the Fierce. I don't know. But let's uh, let's go ahead and do the rest of this. So once you pull that assembly out, you uh, you can remove the main gear, take the bearing, the main gear. We got a lot of dirt in here. Um, so maybe what happened the last time this was serviced was somebody just took the uh, the grease and just kind of spread it around. Uh, but this one's loaded with all the grease. What you want to do is clean all of that out. That old grease sitting on the sidelines has no effect whatsoever on the performance of this reel other than perhaps to clog it. So I'm going to remove all of that now. I'm using cotton swabs here. Uh, you can use little scrapers, uh, other things, but uh, make sure you get the old grease out of the way. And we'll go up top now and we're going to take the case off. Okay, I had to pause the video for a moment there. Let's take our rotor off then. We're going to remove the set screw. That holds a little uh, holding clamp so that the nut does not uh, swivel too much with rotation. And then we can back this off. And we can remove the clamp and the nut, put those in our parts tray, remove the rotor. Just check out the inside here. We're not going to pull the pinion gear, but if you needed to pull a pinion gear, you could take these three screws out and pull up. But this one uh, we're doing okay with. I'm just going to put a drop of oil in here. Go right back to uh, putting the rotor up. I'm going to check underneath too. Uh, underneath the rotor is fine. It's clean. I'm going to check the ramp. The ramp is fine with the, uh, the kicker for the, the bail. So we can go ahead and just tighten that back up. It always It's always a good idea to do the visual on these. You never know where the issue might be, particularly in uh, that little issue we were having there with the completion of the stroke. Sometimes uh, we mentioned that we had to bent one of these, but sometimes what happens is the uh, line wraps around the shaft and that causes an incomplete stroke so in that case we should be good we should be tight here got it spinning nicely and uh, we can also put a drop of oil underneath here where there's the bottom side of the bearing and then we want to re-lube here so we want to grab some fishing real grease in this case this is a pen precision real grease I call, just call it blue grease uh, you don't have to use pen grease on it, but you do have to use fishing reel grease. I'll go ahead and put the grease back onto the pinion gear there. I'll go grab that uh, cross wind block that we cleaned up. Make sure we get some nice grease on the back, as well as the front, because the uh, this sort of cross wind gear, the cross wind block, is going to ride on that. And we want to set that so that the stud is to the bottom of the. Uh, uh, the case. I also want to put that bearing back in before I do that. Sometimes the top teeth on the uh, the gear prevent you from putting that bearing in before you put the gear. If you put the gear in first. Okay, so we're we're kind of greased up on that. We're going to do the same thing with the back here of the cross wind block. Get some grease on it. Get some grease in that channel as well. I'm using an artist's brush to, to spread that grease. And you don't need to over lube. So there was a lot of lube in this last one. Uh, it's just it's wasteful. That's all. It, uh, it's got no value whatsoever. And if it does get contaminated, typically what will happen is that the uh, the grease will just clog performance of the reel. So don't don't go crazy in terms of over lubing it. Okay, we just put the grease onto all of the teeth. We're now setting it into the mesh with the cross wind gear and at this point don't spin the reel because if you spin the reel you're going to move the cross wind block up. This reel and uh, in that whole series does not have a uh, anti-reverse override so if you spin it up you're going to have to spin it all the way down and sometimes a dog 
uh, that block gets trapped up here and it becomes a nightmare. Okay, I'm going to grab the new uh, axle shaft then. Insert that into the crosswind block below. You can use that pin to center it. And we need that offset screw to lock that in. This is where having the part tray helps because you know where to look for that little guy. Sometimes it, uh, it's real easy to lose those pieces if you put them onto the desk. So we're going to tighten that up now. We should be able to put the burring on. These burrings look like to be sealed burrings, but you can put some oil on there. It won't hurt it. I'll put the, the case back in then. There we go. You want to make sure you get that nice snap to it. Oh, and as I'm noticing this, <coughs> looked into my parts tray and found out I didn't complete the tie down process up top. So let's go ahead and pull that out quickly. Get to see me do it again if you were wondering if there was magic there and you missed something. Pull the axle out. We have that little uh, hold down clamp. We have that little screw, so let's get that in. Sometimes manufacturers reverse thread that, uh, that top nut as a way to keep it in sync with the uh, the movement of the reel. Sometimes they use tie down clamps like this one. All right, we're back there. No harm, no foul. Also, we could have put a little bit of grease onto the shaft, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Don't put a lot, just the skim coating of it. Put any more than is needed, and it's going to just accumulate up top here. All right, so a 30 second fix. Take that offset screw again. Let's get that in here. And we can go right back with reset the case. Nice sound, it's a nice snap. It tells you it's working the way it should. And we can just tighten down the screws. So the screw pattern that I use when I tighten down is to go opposite sides. That keeps the pressure on the case the right way. If you go on a circular pattern, sometimes that case will bind and impair the performance of the reel. Should be one more in here, and there is. That's kind of when you know you're complete, when you look in your, your tray there and the parts aren't there. Okay, so our, our core concern was that we were bottoming out. We thought that it was a bent axle shaft, and it, it appears visually that it's a bent axle shaft, but we won't know until we put all of this together and uh, give it a whirl, so to speak. Let's just go back. This was set up for a right-handed crank. And there you go. There's no, there's no bottoming out on this one. We're doing just what we should be doing. So let's uh, Let's get adventurous here, take the bail off and see if we can't do something with that. Uh, I showed on a different um, video that this bail is malleable and that you can rebend within a certain uh, length. So if you're having trouble because your bail is getting stuck midpoint, it's usually because of something like this happened where uh, that thing got uh, really jammed up. So you can, and I would recommend trying to keep this thing pretty much within a certain angle. So we know this is not the right angle, uh, that it really belongs more in, a, um, in an arc pattern. And we're just going to, you can tell it's bail wire, it just bends pretty easily. We're just going to try and eyeball it to a little bit better shape. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and set this up first with the back side of this. There is no real... Um, setting on this one is a dead arm, if you will. Just need to make sure that the tab goes into the uh, 
the cavity so that it sits flush. And then the important part with these bales, if you go to rebend, is that you have to get the alignment on the trip arm side. So you saw that I had I had rebent that a little bit, and you can tell that I'm off here now, and that will cause tension. So just just kind of keep working it, pull a little bit, push a little bit, bend a little bit, and that seems that seems to be pretty close. Now we got a square as opposed to a, uh, a Z. And one of the things that I want to do with that then is put the spool on and make sure that uh, as I go to do this that I have the clearance on the bale at the top of the stroke because there's no sense loading this in right now. We're at the top of the stroke you can see the distance and I want to make sure that this bale if I go to flip it is going to, to cover. and. Uh, it may or may not at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and work this again. And I appreciate your patience in looking at this, but this is such a common problem that it probably is worth just uh, sharing more with you. And again, this is almost like a hanger. As you can tell, I've, I've bound, bent it more around now. And I want to just see if I can't bring that back. And this, this just takes takes time and takes patience, but eventually you can line it up. But you can't have any tension on this bale. When it comes back into here, this has to be pretty much straight on, tension free. So that when it lays loose, it's pretty much perfectly aligned. Okay, so that's sort of the idea. You can see where without doing anything, it's pretty much lined right up there. So let's go ahead and put the pieces back together. Put that line roller in there. Grab the screw. So we know what caused the the bad uh, bend in the axle shaft. It was obviously a hit. We've shown you a little bit about how to make the bail better. We're gonna put the uh, put the reel to the test now. We're gonna throw that. Want to make sure that. We have a fully operational spool and that the bale trips and that we don't hang on the bottom. We already saw we pretty much don't hang on the bottom. What we want to see now is that the bale is tripping. Must have been some hit because it broke the uh, the bump guard below. All right, give it a spin. It's doing what it should, so let's uh, let's put the bale to the test then. There you go. I'm on the wrong wrong side of the flip, but uh, we've got a nice spinning bale, and it's more the way it should be in terms of the way that the bale uh, operates. So what a what a little trip this has been. So you don't need to run out and get the bump guard right away. Uh, I would recommend it uh, if this is just going out fishing. If you were going out fishing, you don't have to worry that you can't take it fishing because it's missing the bump guard. It's cosmetic, yeah. Uh, the whole idea is it probably did what it should do. Uh, when this thing got whacked, it broke the bump guard and didn't break the reel. So uh, if you had this exposed and you hit a rail, you could shatter the side case and then you would have a much bigger problem than uh, what you got right now. So uh, that's the reel. That's how you fix a, uh, a pen reel that's bottoming out that had a bent axle shaft and uh, this one's ready to go back fishing. So I hope you've enjoyed that as uh, part of the series. If you have a reel like this and uh, you need it repaired or serviced and you're a little bit shy about doing it yourself, you can always connect with me. My email is at the end of the video and uh, I'll be happy to service it for you uh, 
uh, by email, uh, by mail. So with that, I, uh, if you like the videos, please subscribe. If you want to see more of this type of uh, repair type work. And uh, with that, I wish you a, a good day. And please stay safe during the pandemic. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.